58 f***ing seconds of damn logos. We hear music playing, yet the play button is displayed on the iPhone, which would indicate that nothing is actually playing. Also, leave T-Rex out of this. My Purge playlist. Purge playlist. Also, third Purge movie continues to perpetuate the myth that at least half of the population are twisted murderers. This is just one of a dozen protests around our capital after reports emerged claiming that the new founding fathers had been using the Purge to help their own economic agenda. People don't give a shit about the murder. They give a shit about the government spending less money on the poor. Also, expositional news team. They uncover a story as long as it's important to the plot. Also, you brought that up in the last movie. Rich people are killing poorer people because of economics and blah, blah, blah. But is it really helping? How many people are dying on Purge Night that really affect the bottom line in a meaningful way? Whatever happened to the Carmelo guy from the last movie? Did this franchise just lazily replace their African-American revolutionary and think I wouldn't notice? Also, I thought the last movie implied Carmelo was going to win this thing. Why do we have a third movie again? 18 years ago, the local news somehow got access to the footage from the cold open of this movie. This montage isn't even trying anymore. This is clearly not the funeral for Senator Rohn's family. It seems like they just threw in random funeral footage and hope no one would notice. They clearly haven't heard of cinema sins. The f*** is going on with this TV? Is this movie trying to tell me the only difference between now and 30-ish years into the future is that we have a yearly murder holiday and people watch TV in portrait mode? This is a warning to all of you who make videos with your phone this way. You keep this shit up, this is how we will all be watching TV in 30 years, you bastards. Is murder our new religion? I thought it was. And everyone was explicit about it? Why is everyone acting like she just said something shocking? Celebrate the night that saved this country from economic ruin. We have other ways. Maybe this is the problem. People like Senator Rohn have only been whispering alternatives to free murder for a night. Remember what I said. She moves, we move. What's he so worried about? It's not purge night yet. No one gets killed on regular nights. There has been far less crime. This is crap. Do I have to listen to this? In his defense, according to the title cards of the last two movies, he's right. Also, this is supposed to be a presidential debate. You can't just interrupt your opponent if you don't like what they're saying. Saying, even if it oh wait Shut. more low-income people are killed during the purge than anyone else i feel like after so many years of this people would have gotten smarter about defending themselves even if they are low-income people like setting up some deadly home alone traps and buying easily acquired guns or just plain leaving the country for 12 hours she got them little titties but she got some big ass balls that's racist that puts her over 270. wait america now has these new founding fathers that created a murder holiday but we still have an election system with an electoral college you'd think that if everyone was okay with the purge they'd be okay with getting rid of the electoral system altogether. But you'd be wrong, apparently. Also, the idea that they wouldn't engage in election fraud is preposterous. Movie decides to utilize the rain machine on a sunny day. <laughs> Just how pointless is a jump scare when the purge hasn't even started yet. Also, what an asshole. The purge is Halloween for adults! I'm pretty sure Halloween is Halloween for adults. Also, how has this guy avoided being killed on purge night? Is this movie saying his booming mask business makes him one of those elite f***ers who don't die during the purge? Hell, they got to a wealthy stockbroker in the last movie. Surely someone wants to kill this asshole. They're being called murder tourists. Because we aren't clever anymore. We had to experience the purge. This guy heard that reporter from earlier say people are arriving from Spain, Denmark, South Africa. So he decided to try all those accents at the same time just to cover his bases. You touch me and I scream rape, you sucking um, there are cameras in this place, right? That's why he knew to go back here in the first place? Not a great threat, but luckily somebody these two thieving chicks respect is about to give him backup. That's the only record, Kimmy. It's convenient that Kimmy's friend recognized who this is, so that we could know who this is, even though it ends up serving very little to the plot. I want men in there. I feel like Leo's job is mostly pointing at areas and saying he wants men there. Men here. Men here. How many men could he possibly have access to? Is anyone keeping track of how many men he wants everywhere? Maybe this is why the unemployment rate is so low. If I don't pay it by tomorrow, I have no purge coverage for his store. A question I never asked is, how does the purge affect small business owners? Also, if you're going to be this blatantly evil, why even bother with a purge? This kind of tactic is, of course, super illegal. But if the insurance companies are really behind all this purge madness, then they don't really have to worry about the law or anything, right? If I have no insurance, I am screwed. Joe conveniently loses his insurance to give him some vague motivation to participate in Purge Night. Is that not the pot calling the kettle brown? Joe said black with his mouth, which would be the correct euphemism, but his voice said brown. Given the other offensive things Joe will say later in this movie, this seems like an odd place to censor. Even though this brick house has these giant barricades, Joe and his team still felt the need to have these guys standing outside in plain view with no visible body armor. As we see this warning for the third time in three movies, I'm wondering if they're ever going to explain what happens to people who commit crimes outside of Purge Night, or if anyone's ever been convicted of killing someone two minutes after the 7 a.m. deadline, or if anyone's ever driven from Nashville to Knoxville to kill somebody and forgot about the time zone change. And for the first time since its inception, no one has been granted special immunity from the Purge. Also, they got rid of that pesky Class 4 weapon rule. I bet the weird guy who owns a tank that I just made up is super excited about that. Senator, you should be in the den. She should also be wearing a bulletproof vest and armed with a flamethrower and grenade belt. <laughs> you go, girl! 
No one has driven by and shot these people yet. Katniss Everdeen has definitely had enough of that capital bullshit and is now killing innocent but scary druggies on the street. Wow, seriously? A guillotine? How did they drag this thing in an alley? Or did they buy the IKEA noodle slicing during their purge sale? This guy is driving incredibly well, given that he is wearing that mask. I mean, think of the kind of work someone has to put into scrawling purge in blood on the Lincoln Memorial columns. It looks great in a sadistic movie, but who are you going to trust on purge night to steady the ladder while you write the letters? I bet it was the guy who they hired to make the movie's theatrical poster. Also, Abe Lincoln is not a Planet of the Ape in this scene. Oh, sun's going down. Hey, looks like someone needs our services. You know, our services, which definitely you know, but the unseen audience doesn't. It's like exposition, only more worthless. It's purge night. You don't sneak up on black people. I wouldn't sneak up on anyone during purge night. I want you to go home and be safe. Yeah, but the purge has already started. Going home would be the most unsafe thing he could do at this point. Movie expects me to believe that this crazy girl took the time to meticulously cover this car with Christmas lights and then successfully drive it to this location even though the windshield is entirely covered with lights. These girls slash the director were too cheap to buy the Miley version of Party in the USA, so they opted for the kids' pop version. Oh no, it's exactly who I thought it was! Congratulations, Purge election year, on the most non-dramatic reveal in cinema history. And I want my candy bar. This just shows what a privileged life this girl has. After killing her parents, who were probably just being normal parents, her only thought is to enact vengeance on the shopkeep who wouldn't let her steal a candy bar. Also, are you gonna tell these girls that their guns are obviously plastic, or should I? <laughs> That's the moment where any normal, insane teenager would just turn into a whiny teenager again. I already took care of my mom and dad tonight. Honestly, I'm surprised that parasite among angsty teenagers isn't a much larger problem during the purge. We've experienced three purges, and this is the only example I can think of. Also, good luck with being an orphan. I'm sure that's way better than your mom grounding you for a few weeks for being a shithead. Let's pretend for a second that those guns are real and ask the question. Where the hell did these girls get these gold rhinestone AKs? Does Limited 2 have an armory in the future? Every day in what is like the purge. Calm down, dude. So is Senator Roan secretly complying with the NFFA's plot to kill her? Because it seems rather convenient she'd want to have a private conversation with Leo in the den, giving these guys enough time to fiddle with the cameras. And I can only assume their entire plan banks on Leo getting distracted for a moment. Leo, the amazing security expert, doesn't notice the timestamp is incorrect on this camera. White power? What's the electric company doing here at this hour? Oh. I'm coming outside, boys. Right, because why stay here when you can see all these different angles at once and you could just go outside and have limited visibility of your surroundings? This video is on a loop. Doesn't anyone watch Speed anymore? It has a lot to teach us. How you doing out there, Bobby? Leo's going to find out his team's been compromised, but somehow none of the bad guys who also use these radios understand that. Even though these clan SWAT team members had the draw on Leo, he was still able to stab both of them without either of them shooting. You know, the biggest problem with this franchise is that it's just too subtle. This guy has a sniper rifle, and this is the best he can do? Man, it's too bad that iPad mini you left in the house isn't actually a bomb. Oh, it is! Excellent! What app is he using for this? I connect bomb? Earth sanitation services! Why are they doing this right now? They'd just run the risk of getting killed themselves and having their death truck stolen. And how are they saying this? Why try and make your drone inconspicuous when you can cover it with multicolored lights? That's a homemade drone. I guess you can call the Chinese factory where this drone was made a home. I'm sure somebody lives there. It's behind you, Leo. 35 yards back. Roan is kind of cocky regarding her distance estimating skills. <laughs> Seriously, this crew of purgers were just lying around waiting for someone to come by. And that's dedication to the craft and probably mighty boring. Charlie and Leo both dropped their guard because movie. Aw oh, man, they shot Lincoln. This guy can't catch a break. Senator. Joe is able to recognize the senator from a distance without getting a good look at her face. Florida. It's the key. This is cute, Marcos, but I'm sure the senator knows how the Electoral College that inexplicably still exists works. Let me see, let me I see. I know a little bit about first aid, I could help you. Every day in Juarez was like medical school. These thieving whores managed to come back right when Joe wasn't on the roof to notice them. Also, these girls meticulously decked out a second car in Christmas lights. And I'm gonna get that candy bar. I hope Joe learns a valuable lesson tonight. Just let the crazy girl have the candy bar. I gotta call her. Joe plays the pronoun game so that everybody has to ask who the hell her is. Executive decision. I'm with Leo. The senator thinks that she can issue executive decisions, even though she isn't president yet. If I want some candy, I'll shake some candy! I just want to remind everyone that Kimmy wanting her free candy bar is a major plot point in this movie. Kimmy and Kimmy's friend don't hear the loud van barreling towards them. Movie goes out of its way to show me Kimmy's boots flying off, yet here her boots are completely still on. Movie puts an American Horror Story Roanoke commercial in the middle of itself. How the hell did it get to this? Probably when murder was legalized and endorsed by the shadowy religious death cult that controls the government. Goddamn conniving, duplicitous, crooked, sucking politicians. I don't think I've heard this much use of the word cocksuckers by a whole bunch of different characters since The Usual Suspects. Sounds like this is more a screenwriter term than every character's go-to word in the movie. Anybody hit? I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm Even though that giant machine gun turned the van into Swiss cheese and the only person who got hit was that kid I'd already forgotten about. Movie pads runtime with slow motion gang fight that I really don't care about. There was no way they could have known we'd be in this van. Doesn't matter. They did. What? 
It sounds like it very much matters. Like, the entire key to keeping the senator alive kind of matters. We get it, Leo, you're a badass, but this is definitely a moment when you're allowed to phone a friend. So the bullet that shot him when they were escaping was also a tracking device? F*** you, movie. Yeah, well, I wish it were that simple. Y'all need to see this. Y'all need to see this, cliche. Boy, there's a whole bunch of Negroes coming right this way. And we sitting up here like a bucket of mother chicken. Whoa, that's like super racist. But I guess it's okay for this guy to say that? I guess? No, no, no. It was a crip whistle. Well, that was a risky flip of the coin. It's good they were the gang that you thought they were, even though you had little indication of which gang they were in the first place. We're not gonna hurt you. Just help my fucking boy. He's gonna die. Was that their hope all along? To get this guy's kid on the van? Because before that, they all looked like they were going to kill everybody in the van. And then Joe did some sort of crip whistle, and everybody shut the hell up. Now Joe is probably regretting letting it slip that he was a crip. We help you. You do something for us. To me, it seems like the gang really lucked out. They now have the opportunity to kill some white supremacists. We call this a safe zone. Did you come up with that all by yourself? These are the real victims of the purge. If all the dead people in the streets could argue this point, I'm sure they would. I've heard stories of tactics that you employ on Purge Night. Roan chooses this moment, right after she's been rescued, to question Dante's tactics. Have I mentioned this guy's orgy of evidence that he's a racist yet? I mean, two Confederate flags, a swastika, a bevy of tattoos that probably represent white guys are the bestest, and that's not even counting the white power on the back of his uniform. I gotta get back to the deli. I'm sorry, but you don't own a deli. It's a convenience store. Second of all, why the f*** would you feel the need to go back there? If it was going to get looted, that ship has probably already sailed at this point. Fine. I'll drive you. Laney is easily convinced. Instead of being suspicious when anyone opens a door, why don't you try talking to Dante about his facility and operation? You'd get some answers and we'd get some more exposition. What are you doing here? If this is such an important room to keep people out of, why is it so easy for any asshole to walk into? Why do you have all this? Oh, this is our clues board. It allows someone who happens to snoop into this room to slowly figure out our plot to kill members of the NFFA. Those are government trucks. I saw them on YouTube from last year's Purge. Someone watched everything wrong with the Purge anarchy. The ton on the original church? It's been closed up since the 50s, but we reopened it. We're gonna walk right through there and into that church without anybody even knowing it. Why haven't we done it already? Good question. We had to wait because, hey, does anyone know why we waited to do this? Is it so the good guys could uncover this plot? Go! Leo seems to assume there was one booby trap and there can't possibly be a second or third, so they keep running like they were before. I can't win like this. It goes against everything that I believe in. This statement would make sense if Roan's people were the ones that concocted this plan to kill the minister, but it was a completely independent group. It seems like Roan thinks that by not having the power to stop Dante and his men from killing the minister, she's somehow compromising her morals, which is disjointed and doesn't really make any sense. If they assassinate him, he becomes a martyr. We lose. That's a legit reason. Let's go with that. Did they really need to write in back-to-back -back justifications for her? I guess so. Even after getting T-boned while everyone was standing in the back of the van, they all seemed to be mostly okay. Also, the Ku Klux Swat clan was able to find the senator in company with dumb luck, I guess? Fruitless handgun shooting at an armored truck. Again, what's with the candles? It feels like Big Candle has some incriminating photos of Hollywood somewhere and it keeps cashing in. Like a picture of Hollywood's O's not wearing a bra or something. I mean, jeez. Get paid to deliver the package, not gift wrap it. Baldy waits until they are about done tying her down before he says this. We'll sin, scour, sanitize, and sterilize our souls. Tremendous alliteration there, but will you explain how you plan to sin your souls? And isn't that our job? <laughs> Let us begin. Does it still count for all of you if it's just one person up there killing? How the fuck do you know about the tunnel? Well, no need to explain that to a bunch of guys who might be ready to kill me right now. They're just gonna have to admire my dramatic balls. Also, that's what you get for leaving your master plan up on a corkboard. Harmon will be the first purger of the evening. As is purge mass tradition, the creepiest dude gets to go first. Fun fact about Harmon, he was killed in last year's purge. Good news, Roan got the gag out of her... Oh, wait, never mind. It's quite convenient for our heroes that Warren's is the slowest throat slitter in existence, giving them ample time to set up and take this shot. No one in the balcony is getting shot at, even though they all have basically no cover, especially Laney. And they were all saved by bulletproof pews. What was that? It was bullets. <laughs> oh, come on, we all know this guy would be a sniveling coward if he was actually in this situation. But who needs multi-dimensional characters, right? I like black people, but I ain't gonna let y'all shoot these white folks. Joe inexplicably makes it about race for the seventh or eighth time. I am gonna beat the sh out of you on election day. Well, still requires the votes of the people in the Electoral College. I mean, great sentiment and everything, but there's not much you can do about it. What about these people? The purge must be coming to an end soon, right? Why not just leave them there and then come back for them when it's not as murdery outside? Better yet, everyone stays put until seven. Is that really so hard? Leo is about to successfully fight this guy, even though he was shot in the shoulder and has lost a lot of blood. If there's anything the Purge franchise has taught me, it's a bullet to the shoulder really isn't all that bad. Earl's vest may be bulletproof, but it's not even a tiny little knife proof. 
The NFFA decided to keep the election system mostly intact, but move the day we vote from November 8th to May 26th, because, you know, a nation reborn. Movie somehow makes the state of Tennessee a blue state, even though nearly all of its southeastern brethren, except South Carolina, are red. Also, Vermont and Maine are staunch red states in this reality. The f that the senator has also taken Florida. How nice, she took Marcos's advice. Win more electoral votes than your opponent. Also, despite Marcos being proven right here, the problem is, according to this map, she was already way over 270 electoral votes before Florida. So Florida's role in the election here can go f itself. NFFA supporters are reacting violently to this defeat. Oh God, I hope this movie isn't predicting the future. It is a disaster. Bobs, shrimp, Creole, shrimp, gumbo. Yeah, you just be careful, kid, with all that hope, because it can be a bad thing. Hope can drive a man insane. This is for dropping a building on my face. Here they come. Bring out your date! Bring out your date! They want the impossible. The wrong kid died. Mister, I'm sorry, I know you told me. Dixon. Yeah. You can call me Joe. They used to call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman. That's me. Who's there? If you're human, you better say so. It's me. Lalima. Lalima.